on the fifth floor of the Museum of Modern Art in New York City, and we're looking at Paul Cezanne's still life with apples from 1895-1898. Right. The three-year span suggests that he worked on this uh, repeatedly over the course of several years. Except it's not finished. No, not at all. In several areas, in fact, the canvas is quite bare, and the rest of it is quite sketchy. It's really sketchy, and you're right. The, the, this tablecloth in the foreground is just, well, it's not raw canvas, but sized canvas. Mm -hmm. The drapery on the upper left is the same. Uh, the pitcher on the right side, lots of the white canvas coming through, and even the areas which are painted seem as if it's only a preliminary first coat. I think we could say that it was badly drawn. Yes, you know, I mean, absolutely. The pitcher is tipping to the left. Um, um, the ellipse that forms the, the edge of the bowl is, is completely sort of deformed. And the glass, the, the edge of the glass, as we, we seem to look down at the glass, even yeah. as we look across at it, um, much too much. Yeah, and these, the, the fruit on the table to, looks like it should fall off. You know, there's, there's no so sense Cezanne, of gravity. So Cezanne could draw beautifully, yes. and according to the traditions of the 19th century. So this is purposeful, and it's, it's, it's this deliberate what? It's a deliberate breaking open of the possibilities of what painting could be here at the close of the 19th century. I think an idea that the tradition of European painting, of it being a, a very mimetic, very real image that reflected the, what the artist saw, I, I think that that had, was obviously completely bankrupt well, by so the late 1880s and 1890s. Because the still life itself, as a subject, is a, first of all, lowly. It had not had any real significance since the 17th century. And he's resurrecting the, the still life as a form. But if you think about the still life, that was one of the attributes of the still life in the 17th century was a kind of really heightened naturalism. And, That's and, true. And, and How so real everything could look. If you look at the yep. sort of the Dutch tradition, um, yep. and yet Cezanne is sort of going at this in a very different way. Entirely different. So, so linear perspective and, the tra and those traditions of hyper-realism as they had been refined over the centuries right. into the 19th century was very much still dominant. And yet Cezanne here is not finishing the canvas, is, is playing fast and loose with drawing, and is creating a, an environment that I think is per very perplexing, must have been extremely perplexing for viewers in the 19th century, but even for us, creates a kind of tentativeness when we look at it. Yeah? I think he's finding his way. I think he knows that the, those traditions are bankrupt, and I think he's looking for a another way to paint. And another way to see. And another way and, to see, and, and, I, and another way to experience. Well, that's, that's true. It. That's it, because I think there's also an implicit invitation here to move into this canvas visually, in a sense, the way he experiences this, these forms. And, you know, in the, in the 19th century, according to the traditions uh, that had been in place for so long, the artist would stand in a particular point in space and make sure that everything was in accord with that perspectival right. point. Right. But what Cezanne seems to be doing is to allow us to move through the canvas and to, in a sense, experience it as we might as our vision actually begins to meander. Mm -hmm. Is it possible here that Cezanne is actually giving us a series of pathways and alternatives and a more complex set of views? I, th I think it is. I think that the bigger question here is how that becomes important or why that becomes important at the dawn of the 20th century, at the end of the 19th century, that something about the experience of the individual, something about the subjectivity of the experience of space, of time, of seeing, I think that the weight of those things and the bankruptcy of that mimetic tradition, that copying of nature tradition, um, you know, something about those issues becomes really critical at the end of the 19th century. I think that that's exactly right, and I think that subjectivity is critical to understanding Cezanne. At the same time, I think there's a series of sort of underlying other sort of visual realities that have come into play in the modern world. The, the, the photography. Photography, the momentariness of, of the glimpse of the city, of the speed of transportation, right. um, and in a sense, the, 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 the making complex of vision. Exactly. And, and Cezanne is taking that vision, that idea of the complexity of vision, and, and really working it and thinking it through and 
eliminating the sort of spiritual stuff that Gauguin adds to it and the psychological material that Van Gogh adds to it and thinking about it in a, a very sort of rigorous way. And of course this will have an enormous impact on the next century when Matisse and Picasso and others will look back to this work really as the foundation mm -hmm. uh, for, for Cubism and for, uh, for so much of the abstraction and the formal, you're absolutely right, sort of the formal investigations of vision that, that go after. Yep. Thank you.